the Commodore Jaising, I'd like to start with you uh, by asking you why nuclear-powered attack submarines uh, are so important to a maritime force like the Indian Navy. We constantly hear that uh, you know these are the real arbiters of sea power, and they've been elusive for so long. The Indian Navy has wanted them for a very long time. They've finally been sanctioned as a program now. Why is this so important? Why does the Navy need them so much? Well, I think this is one of the most welcome developments anyone in the Navy would uh, would agree. Uh, we have been, I think, we we've been wanting uh, nuclear attack submarines since day before yesterday, <laughs> not even today. And this program has been talked about for a long time. The very fact, as you mentioned, that we've been we operated our first SSN INS Chakra way back in the late 80s indicates that the the intention of going nuclear in our submarine capability was always there. There were perhaps sort of other constraints which prevented us from going that far. Mm. And I think the focus being I'll come back to you, Commodore Jai Singh. I think we've lost that audio with you. Let me bring in Captain D.K. Sharma in the meantime. Uh, Captain Sharma, will you take that question? Why is this such an important occasion for the Indian Navy? Why has the Indian Navy wanted these submarines for such a long time, sir? So as I was saying, the Indian Navy has always, or the government of the country has always felt the need for nuclear submarines. And it's not now, it's, it's a four-decade old, sto old story, with Chakra having come way back in 1988, and the crews for that having started the training in 1985. But obviously, for reasons best known, and you know, I'm sure for very good reason, this capability was not uh, developed over the years. But over the years, with the nature of the maritime threat having changed so much, and the mm. Indian Ocean having now become critical and the pivot in the future great power contestation that's going to happen, I think India, as a predominant maritime power in the Indian Ocean, has to ensure that it always retains the combat edge or the competitive edge, or whichever, whatever you may like to call call it. And for that, as a Navy which claims to be a well-balanced, multi-dimensional blue water Navy, the SSN or the nuclear attack submarine is an absolutely uh, necessary imperative. Yes. Uh, you would be aware that we had a 30-year submarine plan for conventional submarine building. You were also aware 2015 a study was uh, approved by the CCS for initial design capability for an SSN, which was successfully completed. And thereafter, the 30-year submarine plan for 24 conventional submarines was modified to right. 18 conventional submarines and six SSNs. So obviously the intention was there and we were all wondering why it's taken so long since then for the CCS to finally give approval to get the program off the ground. Mm. Uh, from, a, from a maritime security power perspective, I think India needs these submarines very desperately. Yeah, We are a carrier operating Navy. We have to retain the edge and we are also aware, as you mentioned, that very soon the PLN Navy, which is building some nuclear submarine capability very rapidly, they've already got six and they intend, how many they actually build, we'll see, but they intend to have 12 to 15 SSNs by 2030. Yeah. Once they have 12 to 15 SSNs in their, in their arsenal, you can be rest assured, rest assured that three or four will definitely be deployed in the Indian Ocean. Because by then we also expect that China with its three or four aircraft carriers, which it will have by then, We'll probably deploy a, deploy a carrier battle group in the Indian Ocean. Correct. Uh, besides, besides its other other ships that it already has, and therefore a carrier capability supported by nuclear attack submarines would be a very formidable yes uh, uh, threat to India's uh, you know so far unchallenged position in the Indian Ocean, and the very presence of SSNs in a, in an open ocean area, even though they you know the oceans are vast, mm. but for a large surface force. It is a threat and definitely it restricts the options of the surface forces to operate unchecked, unhindered if they know that there's an S there could be an SSN lurking around anywhere. The advantages that SSNs bring with the unlimited speed and endurance Correct. is that they can be rapidly redeployed wherever required Yeah. to shadow a force, to follow a force, to, to detect a force or to just go and interdict a force. Hmm. So it is very important that if we have to retain the edge, we should also be able to put the PLA Navy under a similar kind of pressure yeah. as we would perhaps face when their SSNs operate. And therefore, it's very important. Commodore Jaising, can you explain that, you know, what you just said in a, uh, for, for a minute? Because, uh, uh, you know, our viewers would be very interested to uh, get into the details of what you just mentioned. When you, you know, when you said that uh, the, the surface fleet of the Chinese will think twice about entering a certain area if they know that there is an Indian, uh, you know, nuclear-powered attack submarine in the area. 
what goes on in the minds of that surface fleet? What is the danger? Why is it such a daunting proposition? You know, the hydrology in Indian waters inherently favors submarine operations. Mm. <clears throat> the temperature profile and the velocity, sound velocity profile is of benefit because the water gets cooler as we go deeper, benefits the submarine. So right. a submarine to be able to detect a, detect a surface force much before the surface force would be able to detect a submarine. And particularly when we have, let's say, a carrier battle group of 8 or 10 or 12 ships. Now that makes a lot, they make a lot of noise mm. in the water. And a submarine gets a tremendous range advantage. Now, once a, a large carrier force gets a whiff of a fact that there could be a nuclear submarine operating somewhere near them, they could be rest assured that the nuclear submarine would have detected them. Mm. And that will put a lot of pressure on the, on the surface Navy captains to initiate anti-submarine warfare measures, which would restrict their otherwise they Correct. keep it unchallenged in the oceans. And while the Chinese SSNs could do that to our carrier battle group, we must have a similar capability. Let's say if we deploy an SSN, let's say in the Horn of Africa, we know the carrier battle group, Chinese PLA Navy battle group might be operating of Djibouti mm. because that's where we think they'll probably be based. Mm. If we can, if, if the Chinese get an idea that there's perhaps an SSN somewhere in the Horn of Africa, which is operating an Indian SSN, they would be, I mean, it may not constrain them in the sense that it's not that they won't sail, but they'll definitely be doubly careful before they take any such action which could prove detrimental to their uh, surface forces. Yeah. So I think from that perspective, the SSN becomes very, very potent because of its speed, its unlimited endurance, its stealth, and its weaponry. Most importantly, its weaponry. The second big advantage it has, it has land attack capability in its cruise missiles. So let's say we have a we have a continental uh, uh, opponent, let's say like like a Western neighbor, from six or seven hundred miles away, we could open a, a new front for its land forces from the sea. An attack could come from the sea with, without them knowing where it's coming from because the submarine would be anywhere underwater. It has high speeds. It can redeploy very rapidly. So personally, if you ask me, I would have thought the CCS would perhaps approve all six. Yeah. And they would have said that they can be built in tranches of two or tranches, tranches of three. So I'm a little uh, surprised why they only approved two at, at, the, at the first go. Because it's not only about the sub number of submarines. Correct. It's about creating the ecosystem for building these submarines. Mm. So once you say I'm going to have six, it encourages industry also to make the necessary investment to ensure that because they're going to provide whatever they're going to make for six submarines and maybe more later. But now in batches of two, you're not sure when the next two will be ordered or when the two after that will be ordered. So th that could be a little bit of a of an inhibiting factor in 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 encouraging industry to make the right investment because these are going to be indigenously built submarines. Absolutely. We're not going to use any foreign assistance in them. So from both an industrial and technological perspective, as well as from the force level perspective of the Navy, we know we need six. The government has sort of tacitly acknowledged we need six, but to build in tranches of two may be a little... Okay.